Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 129 of ASP.NET video tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about cache dependency on files in ASP.NET. If you haven't watched part 128 of this video series, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session. Let's understand cache dependency on files with an example. I have this XML file countries.xml where I have a list of countries where each country has got ID, name and continent. Now let's say I want to cache this XML data for 24 hours. But then, within that 24 hours, if this XML data changes for any reason, then I want the data from the cache to be removed immediately. Is that possible? Absolutely. That's what cache dependency is all about. Okay, let's understand this with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. First, let's add that XML file. So in this project, I'm going to add a new folder. And then let's call that data. And let's add an XML file to this data folder. So right click on that add new item. Click on data tab and select XML file. Give it a meaningful name. I'm going to call this countries.xml. Click add. I have the XML data here already. So let's copy and paste that here. And this XML data is pretty straightforward. We have countries root node. And within that I have several countries. Okay, where we have ID, name, and continent. Now I'll have this XML data available on my blog just in case if you need it. Okay, so we have the XML file. Now, on this web form, I have a button control, a grid view, and a label control. So if you look at the source, the HTML source, I have this button, grid view, and label control. So obviously, when I click this button, get countries, that's when we want to read this data from the XML file, cache that, and then set the data set as the data source for the grid view control data bind. And after we cache the data, anytime I click that button, get countries button, we want to retrieve this XML data from cache rather than from the XML file directly. So let's see how to do that. So I need to read the XML data and the easiest way to do that is by using a data set. So let's create a data set object. Data set DS is equal to new data set. And to read the XML data, we have read XML method. And to this method, we need to specify the path of the file. And we can do that using server.mappath. Now, we discussed about the significance of server.mappath in the previous sessions of this ASP.NET video series. So if you are new to this method, I would strongly encourage you to watch that video. So the XML file is present in data folder. So tilde indicates the current uh, I mean the root directory of the web application, which in our case is demo. So within demo, within data folder, I have this countries.xml file. So copy the name and specify it there. So we have the data set ready. Now what we need to do, we need to cache this. And obviously to cache a data set, there are several ways. We can use a direct assignment or we can use insert method or we can use add method. We discussed about different ways to cache you know, uh, data uh, in the previous sessions of this video series. If you haven't watched them, I strongly encourage you to do so. In this session, let's use the insert method. So cache objects insert method. So I'm going to use that and obviously we have to specify the key for uh, the cache. So I'm going to call this countries data. And then obviously the data itself in this case data set. And now look at this. The next parameter is the dependency parameter. For now let me pass now. And then we can specify absolute expiration. So I'm going to specify the absolute expiration date time dot now. Dot, let's say I want to cache this for now for 20 seconds. And then sliding expiration. Since we have specified absolute expiration, we don't have to specify sliding expiration. So I'm going to specify system.fab.caching. Dot, no sliding expiration. Sorry, cache dot, caching dot, cache dot, no sliding expiration. OK. All right. So we have cached the data set as well. Now we need to set this data set as the data source for the grid view control. So we have the grid view control whose ID is GV countries dot data source is equal to data set and GV countries dot data bind. All right. So 
we have done this. So this is happening on the button click. So every time we click the button, it's going to read that from XML file and then it's going to cache that. We don't want that. If the data set is already there in the cache, we want to read it from cache. So we have to first check, okay, if in the cache we already have data with this key, country's data key, then retrieve that from the cache. So if that is not equal to null, then we know that the data is already present in the cache, in which case we want to retrieve it from there. So cache of countries, we know that that's going to return a data set back. So I'm going to say data set ds is equal to whatever we retrieve from the cache. Okay. And then I want to set this as the data source for the grid view control. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it there. Okay. And probably I want to display a message in the label saying that we have got this, uh, you know, rows from cache. So label message dot text is equal to ds dot tables of zero dot rows dot count, which will give us the total number of rows. So whatever are the rows are retrieved from cache. OK, so let's copy that and put that in the else block. So if the cache is null, if we don't have data in cache, then we want to read it from the XML file, cache it, and then set that as the data source. OK. And then finally, we want to display a message in the label saying that these rows are retrieved from XML file. OK, so this label, I mean, the message in the label will let us know whether we have retrieved it from cache or from countries.xml file directly. OK, now look at this. At the moment, we are passing null as the argument for cache dependency parameter. So there is no dependency whatsoever on the file. So let's go ahead and run this now. So we are caching this for 20 seconds. So first time when I click this button, it's going to read the data directly from the XML file. So that's what is the message, five rows retrieved from XML file. Now I click this again, five rows retrieved from cache. Now look at this, within 20 seconds, if I go ahead and change, for example, let's say Asia to Asia 1, save the XML file, I come and click Get Countries. Look at that, five rows retrieved from cache. Though the XML file is changed, now you know, maybe 20 seconds have passed. That's why uh, the, the data set is removed from the cache and I, and I got the data from the XML file. But within those 20 seconds, you know, after I have changed the file, when I click this Get Countries, the change didn't reflect in the uh, grid view control. That's because we are reading that data which is cached. Okay, but on the other hand, let's say whenever the XML file, whenever the data in the XML file changes, I want to, you know, remove the data from cache immediately. Okay, so for us that to happen, we need to establish a dependency on that XML file, and we do that using this dependency parameter. Okay, so that's the cache dependency parameter. So how do we establish that dependency? All we need to do is new cache dependency. And then look at that. All we need to specify, there is one constructor, uh, you know, which takes just the file name. So we want to establish a dependency on this countries.xml file. So we just need to specify the path of that XML file. So when that changes, immediately the data that is cached will be removed. Okay, so let's establish that dependency. So server.map path, actually, let's copy that from here. and specify that here. So what are we doing? Along with specifying the, uh, you know, that this is the file after we read that and when we are caching that we are saying, okay, there is a dependency on this file. Whenever data in this file changes, you know, we want to remove this data set from cache immediately. Okay, let's see if that happens. Actually, let's specify the 60 seconds so that we'll have some time to test. 
Okay, so now we are caching it for 60 seconds, but then there's a dependency on that XML file now. So let's go ahead and run this. So first time when we click the button, obviously it has to read from the XML file, and then it will cache that with a dependency on that file. Okay, so get countries. Now look at this Asia 1, and I click on that uh, again. Look at that five rows retrieved from cache within 60 minutes, 60 seconds, no matter how many times you click, we get the same data. But then look at this. As soon as I change that Asia 1 to back to Asia, and I click this button, I get that. And look at the message, five rows retrieved from XML file. So it's very simple to establish a dependency on files in ASP.NET, cache dependency. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.